today we're going to actually talk about the spectrum of heat illness. I have Dr. Chalam here with me and the patient's mom uh, who's agreed to uh, help us with this video. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, so basically I'm going to do a little bit kind of a, a description of actually what happened mm -hmm. and, and what I understand and then you, you straighten me out, you correct me if I'm wrong on this, that he was out running, he's, 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 a, he's going to be a football player and he's been running for the last three weeks is that right? Um, maybe just one to two weeks. Yeah. More like two weeks. Yeah, okay. Every other day. Every other day. Um, swimming. Swimming. He's a swimmer too. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so he's trying to get in shape for football. And uh, today he was doing a three mile run. And about what time was that? Um, maybe nine, eight thirty or nine. Okay, so it's early in the morning. I mean, this yeah. is Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. And so it does get hot down here. But uh, so at the end of his run, he. At the end of the three miles, he started to get a little bit wobbly, a little unsteady mm -hmm. on his feet, and then you pulled him off to the side. What, mm -hmm. what, what did you see? What was he doing? Um, well, I noticed um, his, I, and I was maybe like 50 yards back, so I saw him looking a little wobbly, so I was like, slow down, just walk, or slow down, but it's almost like he was sprinting, just, I think he just wanted to hurry up. Now. Do a, a sprint at the end, okay. Yeah. Or, so I got up to him, and he said, I'm not feeling good, I'm feeling dizzy. And he put his arm around me, and like I could tell at that point he was, you know, definitely feeling a little lightheaded. Right, Didn't right. Didn't think too much about it. So we kept going maybe 25, 30 more feet down, and so we found a shady spot. He saw it, and I said, let's just sit down on curve in the shade and cool off. I had him put his head between his knees, um, but it really just wasn't doing any good. And then... Um, he said, can I lay back? And he laid back, and from there it all just kind of went downhill as that. Okay, he did not like collapse and roll No, uh, there roll was backwards. no falling, there was no sudden Event. going okay. down. Okay. It was more just kind of gradual, and when I naturally tried to cool him down, as you do when you think yeah. you're getting a little hot and tired, it just didn't work. Okay. And so I guess his body was still hot, even though we, were, we had stopped yeah. the motion, but it just... It wasn't working. Okay, so he so he laid back mm -hmm. and then became unresponsive. Yeah, almost kind of sleepy. Um, was the I mean I could tell his he was breathing normally or I mean you know I could tell like he was okay but it was like he was just very very droggy. Okay. And um, I tried I said and I said can sit back up and I think I even pulled him up a couple times and he was just sort of like hunched over like it was and then I got a I started getting a little scared was he acting confused um at that point he just wasn't he wasn't saying anything he okay was very like he was just in a deep sleep almost but he was still kind of sleep he could hold himself up and at that point my neighbor who is a doctor pulled out of his driveway and so I flapped him over and then we began began together kind of as a team trying to rouse him up he brought out some ice and we put a cold pack on his neck. Uh -huh. He wouldn't open his eyes or talk to me, but I put a piece of ice in his mouth and he would chew it. Okay. So okay. that was kind of the re only response I could get from him. But okay. like I would put the ice there, he would chew it. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, that's good. At least he's getting the liquid and it's cold. Yeah. But we were still concerned that he wasn't talking back. Okay. And um, that went on for a few minutes. And his oh. eyes were closed the entire time during this? Yeah, I think okay. so. So no. maybe it may... If, yeah, pretty much. When you try to arouse him, would he open his eyes and look at you, or no? Not really. Okay. No. So you, what made you call 911? Because I felt like a lot of time had kept going by. We tried many things. We brought him into the neighbor's house, into the AC, laid him on the cold floor, and it just really wasn't getting better. He was confused. And, okay. Um, I just felt like enough time had went by I didn't want to gamble anymore okay so when EMS EMS was telling me that uh, his temperature was 102 mm -hmm. his heart rate was 180 and uh, and he told me his blood pressure was normal was that correct? okay yeah I, th I think so okay um, I really don't remember and then they said the heart rate went down to 150 as he was cooling and, he, and his mental status kind of improved in the ambulance so, okay. so Jennifer, where where do you think he fits in the whole heat-related illness? More of a heat exhaustion, 
which um, again, it kind of implies um, a little bit higher of a body temperature. So for him, since his body temperature is 102, that kind of moves us right into um, more of the definition of a heat exhaustion. So, um, but and I forgot to mention, yes, ma'am. Um, when we were like initially on the sidewalk thinking, oh, he'll recover, but um, when he, I know he lost a lot of color out of his lips. Okay. And I remember that was another thing where I'm like, this isn't exactly normal. Yeah. Um, and it, again, just kind of heightened my concern. A yeah. Little bit. What's the last thing you remember before being here? Running. Running. Okay. Do you remember not feeling well? No. Okay. So you started the run, and then the next thing you remember was what? I woke, uh, I woke up at the guy's house. You woke up at the guy's house. So at the doctor's house? Okay. Do you remember how you felt then? I felt scared. Okay. I guess. Did anything hurt? No. So your head didn't hurt. Did you feel like you wanted to throw up? Did you feel sleepy? Kind of. kind of. Did you feel hot? Yeah. So he must studying. he must have been altered significantly because yeah. if he doesn't remember, did you have trouble getting him into the, the, into the yes, house? Yes, we did, and there was weird behaviors like he um, was almost um, combative, tossing things off of us. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. That. That's a good descriptive word. I mean, it wasn't crazy, but yeah, you yeah. Know, as the mom, I yeah. know like this is not normal. Um, he does wear glasses, so we had taken them off of him just to keep him comfortable and he, he kind of just swatting us away okay as we were trying to still like keep him cool and stuff okay and that was yeah different for sure quick question for you buddy did you eat breakfast this morning no ma'am. no okay did you eat anything before you went for a run no did you drink anything before you went for a run no so you just woke up and went running okay <laughs> basically we did we uh, both did it's all right yeah not good yeah um have you so he would so basically you know didn't eat or drink all night long, right. so he was probably a little volume down to start with. Right. So it'd be interesting what if we knew really what his blood pressure was actually, but maybe maybe we can find an EMS report to, to document that. But that's an interesting point that that just add made him a little bit more vulnerable. He probably should slug down fluids before he starts. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's you a good know, learning point. Think about it. Yeah. 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 No, I I'm sure I've done the same thing I'm exactly. Done the same thing. Yeah. 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 Mom, did you notice any swelling, or did you see any sort of like, did his fingers look swollen to you, or did you see any of now, his veins like super? Now I heard, I got history though that he had edema or swelling of his fingers. But and I, I do that. I didn't look. Okay. Again, we were just trying to get him into a cool. We we're trying to get him out of the heat okay. into the cool. Hey, did your did your fingers feel swollen though? In the ambulance. In the ambulance. Okay. So, so there's a little heat edema sort of thing, I and mean, it's a dependent sort of. Uh, the fingers and the feet, you know, a little, little kind of a dependent edema that sometimes develops in the heat. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So certainly the scarier things that we see are is when you're not sweating at all. So that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's the further steps out is that you've lost the ability to regulate your own body temperature. And then, then so talk a little bit about heat stroke, like the, the, the uh, where you have end organ damage and actually it's central nervous system. And signs and symptoms absolutely too. so that's when so if we're so heat stroke is the end of the spectrum so that's if we and you don't want to go cold, there we do not and so that's where um like i was talking about you're you stop sweating altogether um if you were to check a core body temperature you're moving into 104s 105s 106s oftentimes um there is um severe neurocompromise in the sense that Obviously confused or typically unresponsive. Yeah, coma, altered, even comatose, comatose or having or... seizures. So we're giving him about <laughs> yeah. a liter of fluid there. We're, we're uh, giving him a, a little bit of a fluid bolus. And um, and then we're checking some basic labs on him. Just make sure his electrolytes are fine. I'm sure they're all going to be fine. Jennifer, talk to us a little bit about how you avoid heat this? injury. Besides staying yeah. out of the heat. Yeah. I don't want this to Again. Oh, yes. no, so <laughs> absolutely. And so there, being in the heat, certainly in the southeast, um, is essentially unavoidable um, unless you're in the building all the time. And, you know, you do, so I will say that as a caveat that we do try to um, encourage people, if you can, to kind of stay out of direct sunlight for long periods of time. Or if they're going to be out, start to get acclimatized, right. be out there for short periods of time. And, and slowly kind of work Get forward. acclimatized, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So big things to kind of think about are, are number one, you always want to make sure you have energy to actually do the activity that you want to do. So really important to at least have a little bit of uh, food and certainly make sure that you're drinking plenty of water. And the big things are to replace what you lost. So typically water is fine, but if you're doing um, some sort of a strenuous activity, so you are training for a marathon, or you're doing um, prolonged practices, so for football, especially in the summers when mm -hmm. they're doing their trainings, or even people who are in marching band or some sort of formation outside, so military as well, yeah. and they've been they're standing outside doing their formations um, or heavy weightlifting. All of those things have the potential to cause significant strain on the body. So that's when your body will increase the sweat, which makes you lose a fair amount of salt. So you need to be able to replace that. Mm -hmm. So water is not going to be enough at that point, and you mm -hmm. want to replace with some sort of electrolyte containing fluids, a Powerade, Gatorade. Um, so we really appreciate you guys being willing to do this, and I think a lot, there's a lot of people out there in the, who will watch this who, who need to hear this information and actually say, oh, my goodness, that could be me. Mm -hmm. Thank you.